Welcome to Mumbo Jumbo Kids Channel. Mo and Joe are taking a bus ride with their class and teacher. Both of them fall asleep. They wake up because the bus has broken down. What's happening? I think the bus has broken down. Oh. Calm down, children. Let's play a game while our driver gets the bus repaired. How about a story instead? Oh, yes. I know a good one. I can tell you all. OK, Joe. Tell us. Jungle Book Once upon a time, in a jungle, lived a boy named Mowgli. But Mowgli was no ordinary boy. Though he was a man-child, he was brought up by the wolves and taught the ways of the jungle by a panther called Bagheera and a bear called Baloo. You must let go of your fears, Mowgli. You have to become one with the jungle, and the jungle has to become one with you. Yes, Bagheera. But what if I combine both? The best in me and the best of the jungle. Haven't you heard a word of what I've said? Let go of who you are and become the jungle. Can that be? How can I stop being something that I am? Why should I stop it? Why is everybody so afraid of what I am? Maybe it is time we told him about the man village and his family. All right then. Mowgli, you know that the wolf pack, especially Raksha and Akila, have brought you up. But you are a man child. Your family lived in a village outside the jungle. One night, Sher Khan attacked the village. Who is Sher Khan? He is the reason your family and the entire man village died. He is the meanest predator that this jungle has ever seen. And he has a particular interest in eating you. The night he attacked the village, you were just a baby. The villagers tried to kill him with fire. Instead, the fire consumed the entire village. Your father escaped into the jungle with you, but Sher Khan caught up with him and killed him. But not before your father had burned his face and blinded him in one eye. Since then, Sher Khan hasn't come back to this part of the jungle. But his thirst for your blood hasn't been lost still. Just then, a figure appeared behind them. It was Sher Khan. It was about time you told the boy the story. This way at least he knows what's coming for him. Run, Mowgli, run! Bagheera and Sher Khan clash. <laughs> While Baloo and Mowgli run.
might have saved him today, Bagheera, but you won't be there to protect him always. One way or the other, I will have him, and I don't care if you, the wolves, or even the jungle tried to stop me. Though Shere Khan retreated that day, Bagheera knew that there was truth in his words. As he walked back to the wolf's lair, he thought that there was no way he could keep Mowgli protected forever. Shere Khan has returned, and he will not rest till he has Mowgli. He has threatened the whole jungle. That day will never come. No. We cannot put the rest of the family at risk because of me. There has to be a way out. Bagheera! There is. The man village has settled again outside the jungle. Yes, it is time Mowgli went back to his people. But you are my people. This jungle is my people. There is no time to discuss this, Bagheera. You will take Mowgli back to safety, back to the man village. Though reluctant to go, Mowgli starts walking back with Bagheera. Just then, Shere Khan attacks them again. He throws Bagheera out of his way and turns to Mowgli. Here we are again, man-child. There is no one to protect you now. Yes, it is time we met and time that I finished what my father had started. Big words for a weak man, child. Mowgli remembers what Bagheera had taught him of letting go of his fears and becoming one with the jungle. Hence, just as Shere Khan lunges at him, he grabs a nearby tree branch and swings away like the jungle monkeys. Surprised, Shere Khan falls off the cliff and to his death. Are you okay, Bagheera? Yes, I am. You have completed a big task today with your presence, mind and courage. And no one can separate you from this jungle anymore. Very good, Joe. That was a lovely story. And perfect timing too. The bus is repaired and we are ready to go. Yay! Mo and Joe are walking through the park. Joe sees some boys playing football. I want to play with those boys. I'm going to ask them to let me play. He goes up to them. Hi, can I play with you? No way. We don't take strangers into our team. Joe returns to Mo. What happened? Oh, let it be. Anyway, they look so boring. Is it a case of sour grapes then? Huh? Sour grapes. Once a fox was going through the jungle, He saw a bunch of grapes hanging from a branch. Oh, wow. Just look at those grapes. Exactly what I was looking for to quench my thirst. So, 
The fox prepared himself and jumped high to pluck the grapes, but he couldn't reach them. He tried again and again, but he couldn't reach. Finally, he gave up. Oh well, they are probably sour anyway. I shouldn't eat them at all. <laughs> you caught me there, Mo. I would have loved to play with the boys, but because they wouldn't have me, I said they are too boring. I know. I know. Come, I'll play with you then. Mo and Joe are walking through a market. Look at all these things, Mo. Have you ever seen things like these? Seen? I didn't even imagine that such things could be. Who are these people? They are merchants from different countries of the world. Look at that lamp, Joe. Yes, but I want to see this red hood and cape first. Do you want to put it on, Mo? Sure, let me try it. Oh no, what have you children done? Take it off now. What's happening to me? I can't get it off. Mo, you are vanishing! What happened? Where are we? You wore the hood. It belonged to Little Red Riding Hood and we've come back to her time. Little Red Riding Hood What are you talking about? Look inside the house. The girl is Little Red Riding Hood. She lived by this forest. Her mother made her the Red Hood. She loved it so much that she always wore it. Hence, she's called Little Red Riding Hood. Here's a basket of fresh bread that I have baked for Grandma. I want you to take it for her. OK, Mother. But be careful on the way. Don't talk to any strangers. Yes, Mother. Little girl, where are you going? Oh, hello, Mr. Wolf. I am going to my grandma's. She lives at the end of the cobbled path. That's very nice. I wish you a good time. Thanks.
It is my lucky day. Not only is the little girl alone, she has also told me where her grandma stays. I will eat them both today. I know another route to her house. I will get there before the little girl does. Oh no! Little Red Riding Hood forgot her mother's instructions. She told a stranger everything. Let's go to the grandma's house and warn her. I touch anything? This is not our time. We have come into the past. We cannot change anything here. We can only watch. Hide, Mo. I can see the wolf returning. child. How are you? My, my, Grandma. What's happened to your ears? Why are your ears so big? Oh, just to be able to hear you clearly, my child. My, my, Grandma. What big eyes you have. Oh, just to be able to see you better, my child. My, my, Grandma. What a big nose you have. Oh, just to be able to smell you better, my child. My, my, Grandma, what big teeth you have. Oh, just to be able to eat you better. <laughs> help! Help! <laughs> help! Help! <laughs> Don't worry, I will take you home. Thank God, the woodcutter reached on time. Yes, but how do we go back to our time? Red Riding Hood has gone home now. We are back again. Yes, now can I please have the Red Hood back? Yes. Absolutely. Here, please take it. I think it is time for us to go now. Bye bye. <laughs> Mo and Joe are watching TV. Let's watch the fighters' games. No, I'm watching this cartoon. What's happening in it? It's just starting. Watch it with me. The Lion and the Mouse Once upon a time, a mighty lion was sleeping in the jungle. A mouse saw him and had a naughty idea. 
Look at that lion sleeping so peacefully. I think I will have some fun with him today. The little mouse was so busy enjoying himself that he did not notice when the lion woke up. And before he knew it, he was trapped in the lion's giant paw. What do you think you are doing? Oh, nothing. Nothing at all. Don't lie to me. You've been troubling me for quite some time. And I have the perfect punishment for you now. I will crush you. No, no, please forgive me. I promise I will never trouble you again. You have my word. If you let me live now, I will come to your aid one day. The lion thought about it and let the mouse go. Thank you. You won't regret it, I promise. Just go away and let me sleep. <laughs> Enough of this. I want to watch the game. Give me the remote. Now, look what you've done. I've done? You were the one who wasn't letting me change the channel. Anyway, let's fix the TV before someone comes in. Are we in the jungle? Yes, look at that! There's the lion sleeping again. Yes, but he looks so old now. this? Where did this net come from? I can't get it off! My friend! Who are you? You don't remember me? Many years ago, you had spared my life and I had promised that I will help you one day. Looks like today is the day. How will you help me? I'm stuck in this net. I'm sure the hunter is not far away. Don't worry, my friend. I will have you out in no time. You've done it! You've freed me! Thank you so much! You are welcome, my friend. But let us run away from here before the hunter comes back! Did you just see that? Yes, they have become friends. I'm sorry, Mo. I didn't let you watch what you wanted to. Don't worry about it. We can watch whatever you want once we get back home. We're home! Yes, thank God! And as promised, here is the TV remote for you. Joe and Mo are strolling through the park. They come upon a hare. Hey, look at that! That's a hare there. Do you want to catch it? Sure, let's go.
don't know. How do we come into the jungle? I didn't notice. I was so busy chasing the hare. What's that noise? Let's go check it out. The Hare and the Tortoise Good afternoon everyone. As you all know, today the tortoise and the hare have agreed to race each other. The first one to cross the finish line on the other side of the jungle will win the race. The tortoise is bound to lose. What kind of a race is this? Let's hide and watch. It will be fun. Ready? Get set. Go! Let's keep up with the hare. We got here because we were following him. Maybe that's how we can go back too. Good idea. run long enough. The tortoise will be far behind. The finishing line isn't too far ahead now. I think I will just rest under this tree for some time now. I'll finish the rest of the race in a few minutes. What is he doing? I don't know. I think he has fallen asleep. We too should rest for some time. I am tired of all the running around. Okay. It has been over an hour, Joe. Should we wake him up? Look. There's the tortoise. Let's go along with him. For the first time, the tortoise has won the race against the hare. He kept walking slow, but steady. Yes, while the hare is still sleeping under the tree. Should we go back and look at the hare? I'm sure he will be very upset with this news. I agree. Let's go.
Where did he go? I'm sure he was sleeping under this tree. I don't know about that. But look there, Mo. It's the cave we came from. Let's go. It will take us home. Let's go. Mo and Joe are in the mall. They are passing by the toy store. They see a wooden puppet there with a really long nose. Hey, look at that puppet. Look at his nose. I think it is Pinocchio. What is that? Pinocchio. Once upon a time, a poor carpenter named Geppetto lived alone in a village. One night, he found a log of wood by the road and brought it home. He carved a little wooden boy out of it. Satisfied with his work, he went to sleep. The next morning when he woke up, he found the wooden boy had come alive. I can't believe my eyes. You are alive. Alive? Who am I? Let's say that you are my little boy. I'm naming you Pinocchio. Pinocchio and Geppetto started living happily together. But Pinocchio wanted more. Father, I want to be a real boy and go to school like the other boys. I cannot make you a real boy, but I can send you to school. Geppetto sold his coat and arranged for Pinocchio to go to school. Everybody was amazed by this wooden boy. But sadly, not everybody thought well for Pinocchio. Geppetto's mean neighbor came to him one day. Hello, Geppetto. Hello. I have come to take what's mine. What do you mean? The boy, Pinocchio, he is mine. That's a lie. I made him myself. Yes, from a log of wood that you found on the road. The log was mine. You cannot prove that. And it is not true. You just want my Pinocchio so that you can put him on the stage in your circus. Please leave my house immediately. This isn't done. I will have Pinocchio one day. This wasn't the only problem that Geppetto faced. I want to be a real boy. All my friends are real boys. Only I am a wooden boy with no heart. Geppetto tried to reason with Pinocchio. But the boy was too upset and he went to sleep crying. A fairy who was crossing by there heard everything that had happened. Hmm. The boy is quite selfish. Till he doesn't learn to be kind to others, how can he hope to have a heart? The next day, Pinocchio was on his way to school when Geppetto's neighbor approached him. He planned to kidnap Pinocchio today and use him in his circus. 
So he stopped the school children and lied to them. Hello children. Did you know that there is a carnival at the island? It is the most fun carnival that has ever been there. You must go there. The children were excited to hear of this island with the carnival and decided to skip school and go there. When Geppetto heard what Pinocchio and the children had done, he immediately understood that it was the neighbor's trick. He rushed to the island to save the children. He jumped into the sea to swim to the island. Pinocchio, I'm coming for you! Before Geppetto could reach the island, a whale swallowed him whole. When Pinocchio saw this, he jumped into the water to save Geppetto. Papa! Papa! I'll save you! Pinocchio also jumped into the sea. Quickly, the whale gobbled him up too. Once inside, he found Geppetto. Together, they tickled the insides of the whale. Till it sneezed them out. They quickly swam back to the shore and watched as other parents and townspeople saved the other children. Then they went home, happy to be with each other. That night, when Pinocchio slept, the fairy visited their house. This boy has learned to care for another, like a real boy with a real heart. The next morning, when Geppetto came to wake up Pinocchio, he was surprised to see that instead of his little wooden boy, there lay a real boy of flesh and blood. Pinocchio, get up! Look at yourself! Pinocchio got up and ran to the mirror. I'm a boy! I'm a real boy! What an unbelievable story! Yes, almost makes me want to buy the toy and take it home. Well, we can. Maybe it will always remind us to care for others. I agree. Let's buy it! Rapunzel Mo and Joe are walking back home from the ice cream truck. They are both having their ice creams. Just then, Mo notices a strange purple vegetable growing in one of the gardens. Pointing to the vegetables. Hey, look at that! Is that a cabbage? No, a cabbage doesn't look like that. It is something else. What do you think it is? I'm not sure. But I have never seen something like this. It is such a beautiful color. Well, only one way to find out.
he plucks the vegetable. It comes out from the root. As soon as he does that, they get sucked into the hole left behind by the plant. They end up in a village in a time from a long, long ago. What did you do? Where are we? I don't know. I didn't do anything. You, you plucked out that cabbage thing? But you said it's not a cabbage. Annoyed. Will you focus on the problem, Joe? She is right. That is not a cabbage. It is a rampion. Mo and Joe turn around. They are surprised to see an old woman standing behind them. What is a rampion? It is a special vegetable that the witch grows in her garden. They are her favorite. If I were you, I would keep it hidden. The last people who stole them from her suffered terribly. A witch? People suffered? What are you talking about? Sixteen years ago, a couple lived next to the witch's house. Everybody knew that she was a bad-tempered witch who must not be angered. But the couple was not afraid. They were nice people and believed in the good in everyone. And so they lived peacefully. Then came a time when the couple was going to have a baby. One evening, the wife said to her husband, Look at those beautiful rampions growing in the witch's garden. I really want to eat some. Won't you get them for me? My dear, I will get you anything you want. Can I buy you some from the market tomorrow? No, I tried those already. I want only the ones from her garden. That night, the husband snaked into the witch's garden and stole some of her lovely rampions. As soon as the wife had one bite of the rampions, there was a loud bang on their door. It was the witch. You thieves! You stole my favorite rampions from my garden. The very thing I love so much. Please forgive us. We did it for our baby. For your baby? Yeah. Well, then you will pay for this theft with your baby. Before the couple could say anything, the witch vanished and they never heard from her again till their child, a beautiful girl, was born. I have come to collect the payment for my rampants. The girl belongs to me. The couple pleaded with the witch but she wouldn't hear of it. She took the little girl and vanished into thin air. Oh no, that's terrible. What happened then? She named the little girl Rapunzel. She loves her like her own daughter, but she keeps her locked in a high tower that has no staircase or door, only a window. Only a window? Can we go and see this high tower? No, no, you must never go the high tower. If the witch sees you, you will be in big trouble. We'll be very careful. Please take us there. I can't take you there, but I can show you where it is. Thank you very much. The old woman showed Mo and Joe where the witch's tower was. Then she bid them good luck and goodbye. Mo and Joe quietly snaked closer to the tower to see what was happening. Suddenly, they heard some noise ahead. 
it was the witch. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair so that I may climb the golden stair. A thick plait of long golden hair came flowing down the window. It looked just like a rope. The witch caught hold of it and climbed up to the window. Did you see that mo? That's Rapunzel in the window. It's her hair. It's long like a rope. Shh, quiet, Joe. When the witch saw Rapunzel, she looked very sad. What is the matter, my dear? Why do you look so sad? Mother, what is there in the world outside this tower? Angry. There is nothing good in this world outside of this tower. This is your home. Becoming soft again. Trust me, my darling. I don't let you go into the world. Because there are many mean people out there. You are safe only here. Very sad and feeling bad. Please forgive me. I trust you, mother. Back to normal. That's good, dear. It is time for me to go now. I will come back tomorrow. As soon as the witch leaves. Come on, Mo. Let's go up the tower. He is pulling Mo put off hiding when they hear a sound behind them. Mo pulls him back in and signals him to keep quiet. There was someone else too besides Mo and Joe in the forest. It was the prince. He too had seen everything that had happened. And now he was planning to climb the tower. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair so that I may climb the golden stair. Rapunzel's hair comes down and the prince climbs up. Seeing the prince, Rapunzel is surprised. Who are you? I am the prince. Who are you? What are you doing here? Who was that witch? Are you a prisoner here? My name is Rapunzel and that was my mother. I'm not a prisoner. This is my home. I have lived here all my life. I'm sorry, I misunderstood. What do you mean? You have lived here all your life. Haven't you lived in any other parts of our beautiful world? No, I haven't even stepped down from the tower ever. My mother says it is not a safe place for me. She says the world is a mean place. Oh no, the world is a beautiful place. You must come and see it. Really? I don't know anything about the world. Won't you tell me something? Yes, I will, my beautiful lady. I can hear them till here, Joe. Finally, Rapunzel is not alone. Yes, I agree. But I'm so sleepy. I think I'm going to sleep for some time. Yes, me too. I'm very sleepy too. Let's sleep for some time. Mo and Joe fell asleep at their hiding spot. And the entire night, the prince told Rapunzel stories about the world. And she told him the truth about her mother, the witch. As they talked more and more, they fell in love with each other. When the morning came, the prince kissed her goodbye. I will come back tonight after the witch has left. Rapunzel! Rapunzel, let down your hair so that I may climb the golden stair. It's my mother. She has come early. Quickly, hide behind the curtains. She must not see you. Rapunzel, what is taking you so long? 
Sorry, mother. Here, come up. Who was here? How dare you betray me? The price of betraying me is death. Mother, please listen to me. I'm sorry. Quiet girl, you will never see your prince again. Stop it, witch. The prince tries to attack the witch. The witch casts a spell and the prince is thrown out of the window into the woods. Mo and Joe see him thrown out. Oh no Mo, the prince. Let's go find him. He'll need our help. They rush off. Mother, what have you done? Get away from my eyesight. The prince must be dead by now. You do deserve the same end. I am banishing you to the forest. You don't deserve the love and comfort I have given you. The witch cast another spell and Rapunzel was thrown into the forest too. Heartbroken, she got up. Her world had turned upside down. She started wandering through the forest. What she didn't know was that her prince was injured but alive. He was trying to make his way back to the tower to come and rescue her. Meanwhile, Mo and Joe were also looking for the prince. It's been hours since we have been walking. Where do you think the prince must have fallen, Mo? Did you hear that? Hide! It's the prince! It's Rapunzel! They are both alive! My prince, you are alive. Rapunzel, my love, are you all right? Yes, I am. Now that I know that you are fine, let's leave this forest. Yes, my love, let's go. What was that? I don't know Mo, but it was strange. Were we really in another land? It's getting dark. I think we should just go home right now. I agree. Let's go. Cinderella Joe here. Pass it to me. All right. Take it. Oh, come on, Joe. Pass it properly. Sorry, Mo. I'll get it for you. Woohoo! Did you see that? Yes, what was that? Let's go see. No, Joe, it doesn't look right to me. We won't go inside the holes. We'll just look. Come. I think we should go back now. Yes, you are right. I can't see anything there. Ah. Uh, 
Joe, what's happening to us? Give me your hand. Joe, what's happening to us? Where are we? I don't know, Mo. What are you going to do? Yes, stepmother. Just a minute. Cinderella, where have you been? Where is our breakfast? She must have been lazing around in that attic of hers. I tell you, mother, she should never have given her that attic. Shh, girls. Cinderella, why are you still standing there? That breakfast isn't going to cook by itself. Yes, stepmother, it's ready. I'll just bring it out for you. Cinderella, clear this table. Yes, stepmother. Here is my laundry for today. Make sure it's done by the time we come back. You are going out somewhere? Yes, we are going to the market. What is it to you? Don't poke your nose where it doesn't belong. Here, take these shoes and polish them till you can see your face in each of them. Yes, stepmother. It's just that we need a few groceries from the market. I was thinking that if you are going, you could get some things. Oh, our Cinderella can think too. And what do you plan to do the whole day? Just sit around, go to the market yourself and get the groceries. I want our lunch ready before we return. Yes, stepmother. Little birdie, how are you today? Where are your parents? Oh, there they are. I wish my parents were alive too, but they aren't. They are there now. Oh well, I had better hurry. I have many things to do today. The king and the queen announced the introduction ball of the prince. Everybody is invited as their guests. The prince will also choose his princess from the guest maidens who come for the royal ball tonight. How was your visit to the market, stepmother? I have prepared all the food. Come, have it. Then we can all rest before the ball. We? What do you mean, we? Certainly, you don't think that you are going to go to the ball. Imagine Cinderella at a ball. Have you ever even danced, Cinderella? How maybe she thought that the prince was going to pick her to be his wife. You will stay here and clean the house. Stepmother, I have finished all my work. Even the house is clean. May I please come to the ball? I promise I will not trouble you. I will wear sister's old clothes. Oh, don't spoil my mood, foolish girl. I have told you, you will stay at home. And don't you dare touch our clothes. Mother, father, I wish you were here. My dear child, don't cry. Who are you? I'm your fairy godmother. Now come, you have to get ready for the ball. 
I can't ferry godmother. There is no time, nor do I have anything to wear. Don't worry about that. You just get me a large pumpkin, four white mice and two lizards. Yes, fairy godmother. Very good, dear. Put it all there. First, it is time to get you dressed. There, now you look ready for the royal ball, except those shoes. These are beautifully fair, Godmother. Thank you. But how will I get to the palace? Right, your little mice friends will take you there. That is gorgeous, fairy godmother. I can't thank you enough. You are welcome, my child. Now go, have fun. Just remember that this magic will last till midnight. Once the clock completes striking 12, all of you will be transformed into your usual self. Yes, Fairy Godmother, I will remember that. My lady, may I have this dance with you? Yes, your highness. The pleasure is mine. Who is that beautiful girl who has captured everyone's attention? I shall find out, your majesty. The prince is dancing just with her. Yes. He spent the entire evening with her. It's almost midnight. He's not taken his eyes off her. Who is she? Is it midnight already? Yes, it is. Is that a problem? Yes, it might be. Wait! What's going on? Is everything okay? Who was she, son? I don't know, father. She didn't even tell me her name. But I shall find her. Good morning, my lady. The prince is looking for the maiden to whom this slipper belongs. He will marry her once she is found. Oh, that! It belongs to one of my daughters. Oh, that's very good. We have looked through the entire village and yours is the last house. The slipper hasn't fit anyone so far. I'm happy that it belongs to this house. Please call your daughters. Yes, yes. Girls, please come here. Yes, mother. Would you be so kind to try this sleeper on? 
Surely, which one of us should try it? Doesn't it belong to you? Oh, don't be so forgetful, girl. It's your, of course. Now put it on. Oh, how silly of me. I must be nervous. I forgot. It belongs to my other daughter. Surely. Miss, would you please put it on? Looks like it wasn't either of your daughters. Is there any other girl in this house that the slipper might belong to? No, there is no other girl in this house. Very well then. Thank you for your time. Madam, did you just lie to the king's men? It is equal to lying to the king. N no, no, me, lie? Then who is that young woman in the window there? She, she is no one. Step aside, madam, and call that young lady to try on the slipper. B but she, I... Is it the prince? I think I am going to faint. Step aside, madam. My lady, would you do me the honour of trying the slipper? Yes, your highness. I knew it was you. I knew I would find you. I think we should follow her. I don't want to stay here with these mean people. I agree. Let's go to the castle. We'll follow the tracks of the chariot. Look, Mo. That looks familiar, doesn't it? Yes. Do you think it will take us back home? Should we try? Yes. Let's go. Oh! Ah! We made it. We are back. Are you all right? Yes, I am. How about you? Me too. I'm glad. But let's avoid any holes from now on. I agree. Let's just go home now. Sleeping Beauty Mo and Joe are coming back from school. On the way, an old woman meets them. Here, try these cherries. They are the best. Oh, I would love to. What are you doing? I don't know her. They are just harmless cherries, Joe. The boy is afraid. I will poison you. He thinks I have some magical powers. No, no. I'm sure he didn't mean that. Well, get ready to be surprised. Both of you are wrong. I wasn't going to poison you. But I do have magical powers. Where are we? What have you done? Calm down, boy. I am not here to harm you. Then why are we here? Look around the palace. Does anyone seem happy here? No. What is wrong? Let me tell you the story of the king and queen of this palace. The king and the queen of this palace are very kind and generous. The entire kingdom loves them. And so, 16 years ago, when the princess was born, they invited the entire kingdom to come and bless her, except the evil witch. Of course, the evil witch was not happy and appeared at the princess's party. How dare you! 
you invited everyone except me? As revenge for my humiliation, I curse her. When she turns 16 years old, she will prick her finger on a needle and fall into a sleep that she will never awaken from. The whole kingdom was shocked. Every guest at the party went down on their knees and pleaded with the witch. Forgive me, powerful witch. I made a mistake. Please don't punish our daughter for our mistakes. Please, she is only a child. Don't be so strict with her. Have mercy. All right, all right. I see you have learnt your lesson. I cannot take back my curse. But I can bless your child to ease her suffering. And so I bless her that she will be awakened from her endless sleep with the true love's kiss. The witch vanished from the kingdom after that and the king ordered all the needles from the kingdom to be removed immediately. He ordered that anyone even seen with a needle would be hung from the tree in the village square. Our daughter is safe now. Nothing will happen to her. And so the years passed till it was the princess's 16th birthday. Do I still have to be escorted by the nanny? Well, how about I tell the nanny to leave you? Be by yourself within the palace walls? But you have to promise that you won't step out of the palace without her. Yes, mother, I promise. The princess was delighted and to enjoy her newfound freedom, she started roaming the palace by herself. It was then that she came across a strange door. She had never seen it before and was intrigued by what may lie behind it. So, she pushed it open and entered the room that it led to. Inside, she saw a seamstress sitting by a strange wheel spinning thread from cotton. Hello, what are you doing here? I am making thread from cotton over the spindle. Oh, may I see it? Yes, come closer. The princess went closer to touch the spindle, but the seamstress tricked her so that her finger would touch the needle instead. Immediately, the princess was pricked by it. Just as that happened, the seamstress turned into the evil witch. A curse cannot be escaped even if you try. The poor princess fell into a deep sleep and the witch vanished into the air. When the king and the queen came to know about what had happened, they were heartbroken. The princess was brought to her room and laid on a bed. Is the princess still asleep? Where is she? She sleeps on her bed in a sleep that can't be broken except with a true love's kiss. But the princess never met a charming prince to fall in love with him and he with her. She may never awaken. Can we go see her? Yes, come with me. Our neighbouring king and his queen have sent their son to convey their regards. Your Majesty, my parents are deeply troubled by your grief. My mother has asked if there is anything she can do for you in this hour of trouble. She is so beautiful. I feel like She's the one I have been waiting for all my life. Who are you? I have been dreaming about you. My child, you are all right. Did you just see that? She found her true love. Well, wasn't that beautiful? But sadly, it is time for you to go now. I cannot keep you here for longer. 
Perhaps I will come back another day. But right now, you must go back to where you came from. I can't believe what just happened to us. I agree, I can't either. Let's just go home and forget about it. The Fox and the Seven Little Lambs Mo and Joe are on their way to a farm on a school trip. Once they get there, the teacher tells them to collect to hear instructions. Children, I want you to have a fun day at the farm today. But remember, real fun happens only when you follow the rules and instructions. Mo and Joe are exploring the farm by themselves. They come across a sheep pen. Look at all the sheep in there, Mo. Yes, they are so beautiful. Look at their water trough. I don't see a water pipe anywhere here. Who keeps refilling the water for them? You are right, Joe. I have been thinking the same thing since we came here. So many sheep are drinking water, but the water in the trough is not going down. Let's go closer and check. Okay. There's nothing here. Look at that, Joe. It looks like a trap door. That's awesome. Let's go check it out. Yes, let's go. They lift the door and find a flight of stair going down. They start walking the stairs. It is a dark place. They see a small source of light far down. I think there is a room at the bottom of the stairs. I can see a small light there. They come to the bottom of the stairs. There's a small door at the end of the room from where the light is coming. Let's go through that door. They emerge in another town where there are talking animals instead of humans. idea where we have come. Let's hide before we get into trouble. They see a sheep leaving her house, saying something to her lambs. Look there, the mother is leaving the house. Only children are in there. We can go and hide there. They can hear the mother talking to her children. I will be back in some time. I will knock thrice on the door. Open the door only if it is I. Beware of the mean wolf. Yes, Mama. Don't worry. I will keep my brother safe. There is a wolf in this area. Let's go elsewhere. Yes, I agree. Let's go. As they are leaving, 
they see the wolf approach the house. Hide, hide, hide more! Wolf knocks on the door. Who is it? The wolf doesn't reply but presses his ears against the door to listen. Let's open the door and see. No, Mama had said we should open the door only for her. Maybe it's Mama. No, I remember. She said she would knock thrice. The wolf overhears this conversation. He knocks again, thrice this time. Look, three knocks there. Mama must have returned. Yes, brother. Please open the door. Our youngest brother is very sad without Mama. Let me make sure it is Mama. He looks under the door and sees the wolf's legs. Stay away from the door everyone. It's not Mama. It is the wolf. Look at his feet. All lambs grasp. What shall we do now? Nothing. We just wait for him to go away. The wolf gets very angry. He knocks thrice again. Who is it? It is I. My children, open the door for me. Checks under the door. It is the wolf's feet again. It's the wolf again. We can't open the door yet. The wolf lifts his leg to kick the door and then realizes what had been happening. He quickly runs and gets some white powder for his feet. He coats them with this powder. Then he knocks again on the door. Who is it? It is I, my children. Checks under the door and sees white feet like his mama's. It's mama. She has come back. He opens the door. As soon as he does that, the wolf bounces into the house and starts eating them. He eats all of them except the youngest one who went and hid in the big grandfather clock. Mo and Joe watch this in despair. What a wonderful feast! This deserves a good nap on the sofa. He goes and sleeps. The sheep returns and sees her house wrecked, children missing. Oh no, where are my children? Mama, I'm here. Mama, look in the clock. wolf tricked us. Where are your brothers? In the wolf's tummy. Okay, I have an idea, but we have to be very quiet. Yes, Mama. The sheep goes and gets a knife from the kitchen. Oh! You will never eat any more children. Then she cuts open the wolf's stomach and pulls out her children one by one.
sorry, Mama. I got all my brothers in trouble. Don't worry, my child. You are all safe now. Wow, what a lucky save. Yes, so lucky. Is that our bus? Yes, I think we should head back now. little pigs Joe and Mo are going home in the bus Mo and Joe are towards the back near the exit Hey Mo we should make our way to the front All our friends are there I don't want to get separated from them Relax Joe it's too crowded for us to go to the front We'll get off when our stop comes. But how will we know if it's our stop? I know our stop. I'll keep an eye. Okay, if you're sure, then we'll stay here. Some stops pass. When the next one comes, the door opens. This is it, Joe. Let's go. We'll meet our friends once we get down. Okay. They get down and wait for their friends to get down from the front exit of the bus. No one comes. The door shuts and bus leaves. Both children panic and run after the bus. Hey, stop! Our friends are still in there. Wait, you can't leave. Bus leaves anyway. They stop running and catch their breath. Our friends didn't get down. Did they forget to get down? I don't know, but we should go home and tell our parents about it. We aren't allowed to walk home alone, Mo. Well, are we allowed to stand at the bus stop alone? No, you are right. Let's go. Turns around to face the street. The street is empty. There is only one single house. Where are we? Nervously looking at the street. Mm, I don't know. Mo, we got off at the wrong stop. This doesn't lead home. That's why our friends didn't get down. I'm sorry, Joe. Don't be upset. Come, we'll go to that house and ask for help. They go to the only house on the street. As they near it, the door opens. Mo and Joe hide. Three little pigs come out of the door. Their parents are bidding them goodbye. Goodbye, my children. We will look forward to coming to your houses soon. Bye, Mama, Papa. I will call you over the soonest. No, no, I will. We will make you proud, Mama, Papa. I love you, my babies. The three little pigs go off. Parents go inside and close the door. 
Mo rushes to the ring the bell, but Joe holds her back. Wait, Mo, look. He points to the wolf who is sneaking around the house on the other side. Hmm, finally, the little pigs have left their home with no mama and papa pig to protect them. I will eat them. He walks off. Oh no, we should go warn the pigs. Let's go. It's getting dark, Mo. Let's sleep here for the night. We'll go in the morning. Okay. They sleep. Next morning, Mo and Joe get up. Let's go, Joe. They go looking for the little pigs. They reach the first pig's house. All the three pigs are there. They are standing next to a straw house. Welcome brother, see my house. It's ready. I will get mother here today itself. That's a beautiful house brother, but mine is even more beautiful. It is made up of wood and will be ready by the afternoon. Yes brother, your house is lovely. What about your house, little brother? My house isn't this pretty. I'm making it of stones and bricks. It will be ready by evening. A house of bricks and stones? What's wrong with you, brother? Oh well, I must get going. I want my house ready by the afternoon. Come out, come out, little pig, or I will huff and puff and blow your house down. Final warning, little pig. Okay, don't say I didn't warn you. Where are you, little pig? Let's get out of here, Joe. Yes, let's go after the pig. Oh, so you are in there. Come out, come out, little pigs or I will huff and puff and blow your house down. Show the pig scared inside the house. Okay, I have no patience for your games. He takes a big breath and blows on the house. Nothing happens. He takes another big breath and blows. The house shakes. Come out, I said. I haven't eaten anything all day. Once I catch you, 
I will eat all three of you for my dinner. So come out, come out little pigs. Or I will huff and puff and blow your house down. Two older pigs are scared but the youngest pig is calm. Joe and Mo watch the scene from behind the bushes. You think you are safe in there? I will blow this house down too. Like I blew down the other two houses. Brother, thank you. Your hard work paid off and saved our lives. Yes, forgive us. We made fun of you. Oh, don't worry about it, brothers. The important thing is that we all are safe. Come, we'll go and get Mama and Papa too. We can all happily live here together. This is our chance. We should go ask for help now. Yes, let's go. Hey Mo, isn't that the bus home? Yes, that's the one. Come on, let's go. We can catch it and get home. Joe, we'll be fine now. We'll make sure we get off at the right stop this time. Oh no, you won't. This time we are going to the front and asking the driver to help us. Come on. Mo and Joe are in the bakery. Joe is tempted by the gingerbread in the showcase. Look at that gingerbread, Mo. It looks so delicious. I can smell it till here. Yes, it does smell delicious. Do you want it? Yes, please. Mo, please buy some for me. I have special bread for you both. Here. Try this. There's some gingerbread dough left. Bake me some bread. Come, let's bake it together. And so the mother and son shaped the dough in the form of a man. The boy put raisins for eyes, a cherry for nose, and a piece of apple for his mouth. Then the mother put the gingerbread man in the oven. They had just turned around when they heard the oven door open, and the gingerbread man jumped out! Gingerbread Man Catch me if you can! What just happened? I don't know, but let's catch him! 
teasing everyone, the gingerbread man ran away. The boy and his parents ran after him, but they couldn't keep up with him. They followed him out. As they ran, the gingerbread man came upon a pig. Catch me if you can! And the pig ran after him too, but couldn't catch him. The gingerbread man came upon a cow. Catch me if you can! The cow also ran after the gingerbread man, but she couldn't catch him no matter how much she tried. But she didn't give up. She continued to run with the others. As he ran, the gingerbread man met a horse. Catch me if you can! And so, the horse also started running after him. The gingerbread man now came upon a river. He was just thinking how to cross it when a fox came to him. You can climb on my tail and I will help you cross the river. OK, thank you. And so the gingerbread man climbed onto the tail of the fox. The fox started crossing the river. But soon, the water started coming to its tail. I'm getting wet here. Oh, the water is deep. Why don't you climb on my back? OK, thank you. The gingerbread man climbed the fox's back. But soon, the water started coming up to his back too. I'm getting wet here too. If I get wet, I'll die. I'm sorry. The river is getting deeper. Would you be OK climbing on my nose? Yes, I will. The gingerbread man now climbed on the fox's nose. As soon as he had done that, the sly fox tossed the gingerbread man into the air and straight into his mouth. Whoa! What was that? I don't know. But I don't think I want to have another bite of this bread. Yes, I agree. Let's go home. Mo and Joe are walking home from school. Sometimes it is very windy. Sometimes it is too hot. The weather is very strange today. Yes, I can't decide whether to wear my jacket or take off all my clothes. That would be very funny, but I agree. Sometimes it is so windy and sometimes so hot. It's like the story of the wind and the sun. The Wind and the Sun Once upon a time, the wind and the sun got into an argument about who is more powerful. I am the most powerful. I can make everything move from its place. I think I am more powerful than you, my friend. You are a fool if you think so, and I will prove it to you. And how will you do that? See that man coming? He 
is wearing a scarf around his neck. Whoever can force the scarf off him is more powerful. Okay, why don't you go first? And so, the wind blew at the man. Gently at first. The man thought his scarf will fly off him, so he put it around his neck more securely. This made the wind angry, and he blew harder. The man held on to his scarf more strongly. Now the wind blew even harder. Again, the man tightened his grip on the scarf. Finally, the wind got so angry that he blew at the man with his full might. Now the man started feeling cold. And he could no longer walk ahead. Cold and scared, he wrapped the scarf and all his clothes around him tightly and went and curled himself behind a tree. I think it is my turn now. Fine. The sun gently smiled at the man, and the man started feeling better. He sat up straight. The sun smiled a little bit more, and the man felt good enough to get up and continue his journey. The sun smiled some more. This made the man feel a bit warm, so he took off his jacket. Now the sun gave a wide smile. This made the man feel very hot, and he immediately took off his scarf. I hope you saw that, my friend. Yes, I did. Fine, you win. I think you've got it right. That's what's happening. The wind and the sun are competing again. Yes, that is why it is a good thing that we have reached home. Let's go inside quickly. Hi, I am Mo. Hi, I am Joe. For more videos, subscribe to us.